Hi folks, my name is Steve Svensson and I'm uh, a Desert Storm veteran, 44 years old, and I am an electrical contractor and I'm concerned about our future. Not only for my children and my family, but for all of mankind. I write a lot on the internet under the name Stomp K. My nickname is Stomp and my middle initial is K. The subject is about Cynthia. Cynthia is a synthetic organism created by J. Craig Venter. Now Venter started off his career in the military. Uh, he was born in Utah as a Mormon and then they were denounced and they moved around and stuff. His bio is pretty interesting if you ever want to read about it. It's on the internet available. And Venter became involved in the human genome mapping project or that mapped the human genome. He ended up becoming the lead scientist in this genome mapping project which led him to other things. He organized the J. Craig Venter Institute or JVC, JCVI and he spent several years traveling around on the world's oceans in a big yacht called the Sorcerer 2 which was funded by uh, this guy, the, the, uh, the CEO the founder of Intel Corporation, who's also a Bilderberger. Uh, you can look that up. And I'm going to put a link down below that uh, links my original thread on this whole thing, which has quite a bit of information and a lot of detailed stuff. So I'm just trying to bring this to people because there's so much information that sometimes people get turned off by all of the scientific evidence and lots of reading, etc. So this is going to be a quick overview of the whole thing. Craig Ventner, Venter, um, created Cynthia. Cynthia is the, supposedly the world's first synthetic life. They're even calling him God and all this stuff. Truth is, is Venter needs a living cell to inject his chemical concoction into it, and then the chemicals take over the living cell only enough, pretty much like it's like 95% of the cell, but the cell remains like it looks the same as it was when it originally started. He was using goat cells, um, actually. Uh, E. coli out of goats, okay? And so he's injecting these this chemical concoction, it's four different chemicals, into this goat cell, E. coli goat cell, and then the chemicals take over and it becomes a synthetic living organism. Now, the weak, crazy thing about it is, is he claims that this new synthetic organism is controlled by a computer because the computer uh, sets up the DNA chain in it and he's even got uh, markers in the DNA so that when uh, you can read this DNA he, he can say well that's mine I've got the trademark in it and so you owe me he's patenting this synthetic life now if you read the, go to the link below you'll see that Jay uh, Craig Ventner was awarded awards from Bush to Obama. They're all touting this guy as the great new God creating life. Well, that's debatable. But this is serious stuff. What uh, I'm concerned about is this synthetic life he's creating basically feeds off of carbon-based entities. Oil, um, steel, anything that's carbon-based. Humans. 
So it's a self-replicating. So once it, the process begins, it replicates itself. Now they say that they have ways to shut it down in case it gets out of control. But like everything in science, it just it doesn't always happen that way. And if there's people that really want to screw with the world, this is a good way to do it. So, I wrote the thread on the David Icke form, and, a, and it's been picked up around the internet. But it's called uh, The Beast of the Revelation's name is Sim Cynthia. The reason I call it The Beast of Revelation is because my concern is this is they're using algae as the biocarrier. Uh, specifically cyanobacteria or they call it blue-green algae. Now if you look around on the internet in the news blue-green algae is all over the planet right now killing fish, shutting down lakes, you name it. It's supposed to go away when it gets cold but it seems to be getting worse even though it's getting colder. It's starting to come winter and the algae is still shutting down lakes. There was a blogger who came out during the oil spill that said that they were using the Gulf of Mexico, Chesapeake Bay, and the Great Lakes as bio farms for this algae. Now when this first came out I kind of poo pooed the idea because it was a little bit out there and I was thinking well what, what is algae going to do any good for anybody? But now if you read the news algae fuel is everywhere. In fact I just wrote a thread today about out uh, the Navy buying $424 a gallon algae fuel for a ship they're using and the, the fuel is 50-50 mix so it's part diesel and part algae. Imagine if it was all algae it would be like $848 okay? So this algae my, my theory is and there's a lot of evidence to back this up that this algae they need a lot of it to produce what they want to, they basically want to poison the world's waters. Cyanobacteria grows a lot better in fresh water than it does in salt water. But they need a massive amount of this algae in order to do what they want to do. So the oil spill in the Gulf in my opinion was to feed Cynthia to be a feedstock for Cynthia and you'll notice that uh, Michigan around the same time had an oil spill that actually ended up feeding into the lake Great Lakes mm -hmm. now, I'll say they didn't but it ended up in the Great Lakes and if you look at Lake Erie they had a huge problem with algae and Chesapeake Bay right now is the same problem they have tons of this algae and they're saying well a lot of people say it's oil but it's really it's algae it's algae that looks and smells like oil because and my concern is it smells like oil because this synthetic bacteria has taken over and it mimics the cells it takes over so if it's taking over oil it's going to mimic that and it's going to look like oil it's going to smell like oil um, the coloration is different because of some of the oxidization I think and algae has different colors and stuff like that. But what happens when it gets big enough and Jake and Craig Ventner decides to push the enter button on his software program that controls all of this synthetic organisms through a software program, he can create any kind of life form he wants. He's already said that that's his goal is to create whatever, a new life on the planet. So technically he could make the beast right, rise right up out of the ocean and everybody who believes in God is going to freak out. So hopefully people will look into this a little further because it's urgent. We need to pay attention to what's going on. Thanks for listening.
we're here today to announce uh, the first uh, synthetic cell. A cell made by uh, starting with the digital code in the computer, uh, building the chromosome uh, from four bottles of chemicals, uh, assembling that chromosome in yeast, transplanting it uh, into a recipient bacterial cell and transforming that cell into a new bacterial species. We can create cybernetic individuals. We are the gods now. Blurring the lines between fiction and reality, we see a futuristic presentation of the technology conference TED. The keynote speaker is the founder of the Wayland Corporation. From the Titan Prometheus, our first true piece of technology. 21st century. Biotech, nanotech, fusion and fission and M theory. And that was just the first decade. We need to pay attention to what's going on. Watch this. This huge thing inside the blob's gonna come swimming up through here. Watch. Unbelievable, but look at those little red dots. They're all like these polywog things. Probably about the size of baseball mitts. Here it comes. It's gonna come from the left hand side bottom. Where it says oceaneering. Unbelievable, man. There it comes, see it? Look at them things swimming out of there. You know, what are those? I bet you they don't even know what they are. I bet you. Here it comes, see it? Here it comes, swimming up from the bottom left-hand corner. That is inside the blob. Look at that. That thing is huge. Oh man, look at that. People, get this video out. 